are connected. Hello, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Outside the Box. I have a special guest tonight, which I'm going to introduce very uh, soon. Um, I just want to let you guys know, especially if it's your first time watching me, who I am, what the show is about, and things like that. Uh, my name is Sage the Coach. I am a certified life and relationship coach. And my show, Outside the Box, is to kind of show that God is bigger than our boxes. And I usually do that on Monday nights at 7 or 8 p.m. And so tonight I have a little bit of a little bit of different topic to discuss tonight because it's not necessarily uh, Christian based entirely, but to show that thinking outside the box is not just for in a spiritual perspective, but also a natural perspective. And I want to do that today with my special guest, um, Andrew McCardo. And so um, thanks again, Andrew, for doing this. And like I said, I want to kind of, I like to kind of show that, you know, and it's funny because I, I, I wasn't following you on Instagram, but I started to, you know, look into you after a little bit more after we, you know, agreed to do the show and your Instagram page has a very similar name to my show because my show is thinking outside the box and what, and you're on, on your Instagram page, you, what is the name of it? Challenge your thinking. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's the key. And that's what I kind of like to do. Um, and I want to, again, do that today with Andrew McCardo because his story is amazing. Like, it's so spectacular to me to have seen him from the beginning. And for those of you who don't know, so let me do a small introduction. So Andrew, and you can fill in the gaps where I don't have the information, started live streaming um, the protests after the, de the death of George Floyd on his Facebook page. And I, a friend told me about it because I really wanted to go out and protest and stuff like that. And I couldn't because of the health risk and things like that. And so I, I, it was like when you watch the news, you were just kind of getting this glossed over kind of highlight stuff. And I really was kind of itching to know more of what was going on. And so a friend shared Andrew's live stream with me and it just really kind of satisfied my my urge to be out there. I could really see what was going on. I mean, even after hours, because the, the, the TV show is only going to show you again, the highlights, but Andrew was there all night. You can see what was going on beforehand after, um, you know, the highlights and the low lights, you know, and everything. And it just really gave me a sense that I was there. And so since then, um, which has been a, a little over a year now, I'm sure Andrew has gained such a following with what he was doing that he has his own media company and over 70,000 followers, especially on Facebook. And I'm sure others on his other uh, social media out, um, you know, profiles. Mm -hmm. So it's been really exciting to see him grow and really exciting to keep up with things from his more everyday person kind of perspective as, as opposed to like the news media and things like that. And so Andrew, that's my introduction. I want to do from my end about what you do. Um, if there is there anything that you want to share about, you know, that I missed or you think is important also with what you do? Well, I think it's just important to point out that I am blessed and I am a Christian. I do believe in God. And this this was a calling sent to me by God. I know your channel. I, I've been watching some of your videos, but it, it not many people know this. But the first. No, yeah, I was think it was the first night of the riots unrest here in Minneapolis. I was in the shower and all of a sudden I just heard this voice and I don't know, I think it might've been my conscious, you know, when you can hear yourself talk and you, it's your voice. So I, it, it might've been my voice, but it was a little stronger than my voice. Like it, it was me, but it was a, a strong version of me that I've never heard of before. And I've never heard from before. Mm. And they, and, and it was, I think the first night was a Thursday. Maybe it was one. No, it was a Thursday. And I just, I just got, you know, I just heard the, a voice in my head that said, start a media company after what I just did that all night. I was out there all night with my 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 phone, you know, with the, my personal Facebook page. And the voice just said, start a media company. And I, I was like, how the, f like, I, I just borrowed $60 from my friend to make it to the next week because I was in school and I wasn't collecting. I didn't get unemployment. I didn't get, I only got one stimulus check uh, because I was in school and I was collecting 
uh, veteran benefits uh, for my time in the military. So the military was paying for my my time at school. So I didn't get I didn't get anything because the government was already sending me money. And so I said, how am I going to start a media company voice? I don't know what to call it, but it just was so strong and powerful and came over me. And, and I just felt like I'm just in the shower and I'm tingling and I'm crying because like it was just a lot. Like wow. I just I just I just went through a lot then that night and then just to feel like this strong like inner voice that just was like this is what you're gonna do like this is what's gonna happen now and I was like all right and so then all year I just followed this this voice and now I mean I don't know where the voice went <laughs> the voice isn't voice ain't there much and uh, but it's okay because I feel that it, it that that motivation that it gave me last year wherever it came from if God or you know my um, you know, myself, cut my subconscious, wherever. Um, but I believe it was a calling from God personally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that set me up for where I am now. And so, and those were, that's very real things. Like I called my brother the next morning and told him, I said, Matthew, like God told me to start a media company. He said, Andrew, how are you going to do that? You have no money. That's the first thing he said. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know you're right. Like, I don't know, but we just, I just got to do it. And so uh, I just kept, continuing on with what I did the first few nights of the Minneapolis riots and uh, the unrest and then the peaceful protesting. And then just now we're doing, I'm doing press conferences and, you know, it's like, uh, just a complete blessing. And I think that's the most important thing is that this is, this is all a blessing. Uh, yeah, this was, yeah. yeah, this wasn't, I didn't, uh, plan this i didn't set out to you know what i want to be a newscaster mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't I want to broadcast the news like, i can't stand the news so yeah. the fact that i'm doing something that but i think that's that's another motivational piece is because like you alluded to in the beginning the the news that we were getting from you know the mainstream aspect just from the riots alone in minneapolis was just so uh, they were just doing b b-roll footage of the same building yeah. that was on fire for I don't know how long because I didn't really even watch because I was out there. But then, but I heard about all that uh, yeah. throughout the rest of the year. They said, Andrew, we watched, we didn't, even people that might have followed me after that, they said, we watched the Minneapolis stuff, but we didn't see it how we would, see, we would have saw it through your lens. And that's, it, it's just important because it's a live feed. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't edit things unless it is an edited clip and I make sure that's known. But my, the bulk of the content in the, in the news reporting is a live feed. So it's yeah. just a it's just a blessing, and I'm and I'm thankful, and that's the best way I can sum it. Yeah, up. and I do remember, especially when I first started watching you, I remember you talking about how you got the idea, and you felt like it was divine and things like that, and it was really an inspiration, and even for me, um, because okay, so you know from being out there that it's very easy for an ugly face to be put on the protest that people are being violent, and you know being destroying their own neighborhoods and things like that. But your videos really showed a totally different perspective of what was going on, especially overnight, because sometimes you would stay out there very, very late and you would see people in like circles praying. And um, I remember a, a few times I saw some some younger black guys, older black guys kind of talking to younger black guys, letting them know that we have to do things differently and things like that. It was so, so, so inspiring. And I wasn't satisfied watching the news anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, after seeing your show, because it wasn't really letting me know exactly what was going on and getting to kind of the heart of the situation to see that it wasn't just about, you know, violence and destruction, but there was actually people out there who not only cared, but had, you know, some serious issues with what was going on and, and, and really kind of explaining it. So I really, really thank you for that a lot, because I, I doubt I would have I would have gotten that perspective if it was not for watching your watching your live feed so yeah and thank you so much one of the most and it's still ingrained into my mind uh visual evidence of that was i think it might have been the, the second day or the third day and there was still looting happening and in, in the businesses on the sides and, and whatnot people were going in and out taking things but there was a, a lar very large organized uh protest plan to, to march on lake street and go towards saint paul it might have been the second night or whatever but that's all these this it was all the activists the community leaders and and they had uh the naacp in there they had the they had everybody in that group and they were telling every that people that were, were participating in the the destruction to stop you know come like join us like this is the message like all right that that it's time to be you know they were telling the people that were 
uh, participating in that. It's time to be done. Join. This is the. This is what we want to do. And and to see the difference in the in and watch that that march go down Lake Street and see the the what the me the message is and the difference in the people that were taking advantage of a situation. Exactly. Because uh, they weren't even going to listen to anybody out there. They were out there taking complete advantage of of yeah of the situation and yeah. and and that's what the beginning that opened my eyes to the reality and the truth and what and what people are really asking for it exactly uh, yeah exactly wow that was that's great so so one thing that i noticed in the beginning of your show okay let's let's like fast forward a little bit before we go back to the past again so now since you started doing that can you kind of take us through where that led today because now your footage has been used for a lot of major tv networks and you do a lot of other you cover a lot of other stuff now so can you kind of fast forward and kind of bring us to today yeah so I, I was live on my personal facebook until about august and then when august came i was in kenosha wisconsin and that's when i created mercado media and uh, we became an llc we became a business and so it wasn't just me out there on my cell phone. Like it actually became a media company in, in August of last year. And I was in Kenosha, Wisconsin. That's the first time I had went live on Mercado Media, the, the platform. Uh, I'm also, we also stream on YouTube. So all of our videos go to Snack Squad YouTube channel. And that's kind of like the one-stop shop for all the different various contents, or all the various content that I do because it's not just uh, the news reporting. So fast forwarding to this year now, um, I like to play video games. Um, I, I like to uh, just travel. I play a lot of softball. I'm in, involved, heavily involved in the recovery community, um, uh, specifically the softball recovery community. So okay. those that are, are seeking recovery are, are, are seeking a life of sobriety. And, and Friday nights are an avenue for, or for individuals in recovery to, to do something. Okay. and not go to the bar and 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 so that's been a, a crucial part of my life is that friday night recovery softball league and so I, I i stream uh like my video games i do stream video games on snack squad mm -hmm. i stream my softball games so there's an audience for for that uh I, I i take my personal opinions as best as i can out of mercado media and i'll i'll go live on snack squad or my personal facebook and and discuss my personal uh, feelings yeah afterwards because when I'm out there you know it's a lot of people uh, a lot of reporters provide their, their their commentary over it and just put their own opinion over the whole video mm. and then you just hear their voice the entire time and you don't even watch what's happening so mm. I think it's important um, while I'm out there and while I've developed to take time afterwards and discuss my personal feelings and then just let the the video speak for itself and that's been the growth that I'm, I'm still trying to learn Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so again, now you, cause I know about snack squad and, and, you know, if you want to let people know about that a little bit more before we get off of here, that's, you know, yeah. that's great. But what, when did media outlets started reaching out to you? Cause I know a lot of your footage has been used. Even a few people contacted me because of some of the groups that I run looking for footage and I always directed them to you. So when did, uh, people started calling you about the stuff you were putting on Facebook and and YouTube. This the first night that that night, oh, the very wow. first night, the very first night I started. Uh, I had uh, very large uh, people that had platforms uh, with millions of followers sharing my feed, so I had a lot of viewers right away. Uh, it was sixty eight thousand followers overnight. Wow! Overnight. So it it was shared. To, I've had it. I've had feeds shared from here in Minnesota, all the, all local affiliates know who I am to the BBC. Wow. Uh, so, and it's, it's just been a blessing for snack squad. Uh, snack squad started in Seattle. I was, I was in the chop Chaz zone in Seattle, Washington, um, last year. And we just sat down. I just sat down, uh, cause the news was saying it was just, uh, like a occupied zone. Like there was mm -hmm. guns everywhere. They just, mm -hmm. They tried to paint the same narrative that they did of George Floyd Square over the Chop Chaz zone back when it first started. So, right. and, I, and that's when I was there. I was there when it first started. And so I just went and got 
some street tacos and sat down in the middle of the chop chaz zone in the football field and started eating tacos. And I said, dang, this is like a, I, I, someone said it in the chat or, or something. It was like, we're like a snack squad or something. Mm -hmm. So it went from that moment. And, to, and then I would go home from all the, the trips to Seattle and Portland and Tulsa. And, all, and I, when I would come home, I would stream video games for everybody that would tune into my news broadcasts because they would want to hang out more or hear more from me or, or just, yeah. They enjoyed the community and the chat on the news reporting streams. Mm -hmm. And so they just wanted more. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to use and abuse Mercado Media for everything. Because some, okay. people, some people do that where they'll take their, their big platform and put everything on it. But no, mm -hmm. I, I really want to just keep the news broadcasting, uh, you know, current events on Mercado Media. And Snack Squad uh, was created more for, like, like I said earlier, video games, travel, softball, my, my opinions, discussions. Okay. Okay. podcasts uh okay. you know like things like that okay okay wow um and so um you've been doing i know you just talked about kenosha so it seems like your um what started as just you streaming kind of um grew into a media thing but you're now traveling it it seems like you travel a lot so can you talk a little bit about the different places that you've traveled and the kind of stuff that you have started covering outside of the protests yes yeah, so it's been primarily protests, uh, but that's been the foundation. Uh, other things I have covered, uh, I was in Iowa last year. There was storm damage during the derecho, and I went to went to Iowa, went through the neighborhoods and just and showed storm damage and, and tried to take my stream and, and take it to local community leaders, which I found uh, one uh, that was running a barbecue pit and forgive me i cannot remember his name it's just it's been a long year and a lot of a lot of stuff but he he was running a free barbecue uh stand for everybody in the community that was affected by the storm uh and, and providing free food to the community down in iowa and so things like that like i can get on stream and, and film that and, and get and get the word out to people that might be in, in need because that's happened so many times where there will be something happening on the stream and people can directly make a direct impact because it's live so yeah, wow. you can make you can make calls you need to make or, or or go go to things if you see it's live right then and there you can go and, right. and all you need to do is is be referenced but yeah m m most of the content has been the protests and the civil unrest and and whatnot uh, yeah. for the last year but i have tried to branch out into other avenues it's just it's just a lot especially uh some of the events like you you, you talked about kenosha yeah. um, minneapolis uh, last year uh, brooklyn center this year uh, mm. really really took me out uh mentally and yeah. physically so it, I, I'll, I will branch out and i will be getting more reporters to cover some some other things but yeah, everybody's got to start somewhere <laughs> right wow wow I, I mean i i go through a lot like i'm an author as well and so i write books and i have my coaching i have my podcast then I also have kids. And so I know how easily stuff like this can be really, really overwhelming. So how do you manage it all? Like, and how do you stop yourself from being overwhelmed? I know I saw some shows before where you were like, I'm taking a break, you guys. Like, I'm, I'm tired and things like that. So how do you manage, you know, your sanity with everything that's going on and how fast it's coming? Well, <laughs> weed, <laughs> uh, THC uh, it really does help me out, though. It's, I'm not, it's not. Uh, to be a joke at uh, THC and CBD really helped me out and just um, main, maintain my anxiety because I do have high anxiety now and PTSD wow. and, and mental and mental health issues that I did not have prior or, or I had mild, mild, mild PTSD from the military. But this the this is completely taken over uh, the, the, the reporting boots on the ground is completely taken over that. And so, wow. so uh, the THC CBD Delta eight really helps me talking about, talking about it, talking it out, um, not keeping it in, um, having a solid group of people to go to and talk to about things that are difficult. Um, having, just having a support group, having healthy activities to do in, in my free time, okay. like, like my recovery softball league on Friday nights. Okay. Uh, I play, I play a bunch of softball beyond that too, during the week. Okay. for my during the summer so i'm pretty active i'm i'm active in, in sports uh and just uh, yeah and i play a lot of i play video games so and that snack squad stream is is crucial for me because yeah we, we have a lot to do on mercado media and a lot of reporting to do but the 
the uh, the extra avenue I have on Snack Squad by playing video games late night and and whatnot and hanging out with with an audience that just wants to chill with me is right. is, is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know one of the things, and um, I'm not sure like your fan base, especially say the people that kind of want to chill with you. One of the things that I noticed when I was watching it, I really like how you dealt with people. Like you're very like. Um, it was comforting and you were not like arrogant or mean. I mean, the way you just dealt with people, you were very kind of open and, and respectful to everybody. Very cool. Very laid back. Even if it was a high tense situation for now, I didn't see everything, you know, but from the times that I saw, I was really like, wow, this is a cool guy. Like, I really just like how you dealt with people. And I think that, you know, that's that's like what you said, the people who kind of want to hang out with you. Um, this comes from that, because the way you deal with people, I mean, you have a lot of people doing kind of media stuff and podcasts and all that stuff now, which has probably just exploded since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. They're kind of jerkish. They get controversial. So, but you were just really laid back. Very cool. And I know you say you were a Christian before. But still very respectful of other people's beliefs and things like that. And I really, really appreciated that about watching you. So as much as it was about the footage, your personality went a long way too in kind of keeping my attention because you were very relatable, very respectful and things like that. So that's something that I kind of wanted to touch on there. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Um but I did notice that in the beginning, you were not really showing your face that much. Um, and then later you started to show your face. What was your thinking behind that or your reasoning for not showing your face and then the decision to kind of go ahead and start showing your face? Uh, at the beginning, I just kind of wanted to show the, the, like what was happening in front of me. There was so much going on that I felt turning the camera around and taking it and pointing it at me would, would distract from what was going on all around me. Um, and so over time now, so I was kind of camera shy too. I had never, I am not a, I've never done this. I never, yeah. I wasn't a content creator. I didn't make videos, you know, I wasn't on the internet like that. I made posts, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't on, out there like that yet. So I was yeah. just kind of, kind of camera shy. Um, and whatnot. So I know over time, you know, my confidence has grown and I'll turn the camera on me now to do interviews with somebody because I feel they're more comfortable if you're standing with them in the camera instead of pointing the camera at them. Yeah. Standing standing on the other side of the the camera. I don't know. I, I think it provides more comfort to the interviewee. Um, but yeah, it's just been a, a confidence boost, I think, from yeah. last year to now and being comfortable being on camera myself. Okay. okay. Um, and so uh, another thing is that you had some pretty scary moments in there some uh, at times. Um, and like, again, I didn't watch everything, you know, I didn't see everything. So I'm not sure, you know, how close you really came to being hurt at times. And you did talk a little bit about PTSD and things like that. Um, there were some really tense moments in there. So, I mean, did you come, did you end up having any major uh, injuries or kind of like, what are some of the worst things that you kind of witnessed out there and things like that? Well, uh, the biggest one would be Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And that was the start. And I've never, you know, I was in the military, but I never saw, you know, people getting killed in front of me until that moment. Um, and so, and, and I, I was on that street. So it all played out in front of me, in front of my eyes. And I just, you know, I'd already seen a lot up to Kenosha, which was in August. And, and when I just seen that and it was just a lot for me in that wow. moment of time. So, wow. uh, that didn't, that just affected me mentally. I mean, we get, we're subject to less than lethals, <clears throat> um, tear gas, flashbangs, CS gas, you know, that's just, that's just part of being out there. If you're out in a, in an unrest situation or in a conflict situation, you just, you gotta know that that's just gonna, might be part of it. You know, bring your yeah. gear. I have gear now, like I have a full face shield gas yeah. mask so I can both see and breathe so I don't have to have a two different things going like goggles and a, and a uh, ventilator or, yeah. you know just I have a full face shield to keep me protected in, in moments like that so definitely you know the Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha wow. was, wow. was the first one and then recent and recently was uh, Brooklyn Center Minnesota uh, which was in April after Dante Wright's uh, killing Wow. Kim Potter mm. um, and 
and I just, yeah, I never, I never, I've never shouted at the police before. You know, I've never chanted at the police. I've never, I don't even think I have, you know, I have my opinions on the police, but I don't even think on a video I've ever said anything bad about the police. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I try to hold them accountable to their job right. and to the standard that they're supposed to be working at. And that's mm -hmm. an issue with people. But, uh, you know, in, in, in Brooklyn Center, I'm standing there and I'm getting my stream ready to go. And, and one single individual was starting to unlatch. There was a gate and I saw a flashlight from the roof and a flashbang went straight at me and hit me in wow. the chest. Oh. But I, I have a, I had my uh, vest on though at Brooklyn Center because certain situations I, I have uh, up armored gear that I wear. So my, my, my vest and my helmet that you have to wear almost in like a conflict zone, but that's just, that's just what it's been. And, and so I was hitting the chest and I couldn't, I was just like, what just happened? And then it blows up at my feet. And so oh, wow. I was a little disoriented and my buddy, uh, Kenny Erickson, who's my photojournalist helped me across the street. Like he had to like grab me and carry me across the street. It was like my gear was falling. I just, I couldn't believe it. I was, I think I was more shocked that that had happened. Right. But, that, but that night, uh, the press and all independent media and, and the press in Brooklyn center that night were, were heavily targeted from law enforcement so wow. all, in all, all in all it's it's more of a mental mental thing for me than i haven't been physically it's harmed there, yeah. I did a couple rubber rubber uh or uh those uh pepper balls that look like paintballs i've been hit by those a couple of times flashbangs tear gas but in terms of like serious injury no wow. it's just more mental than it is uh, yeah so. wow wow that's a lot so like speaking of that like your family like um are they like andrew stop going out there you're gonna get hurt it's dangerous like have you had any type of pushback from your family as far as like your safety and things like that yes uh very much so they want me to not be out there and be safe and and you know it's like i like i said i you know i don't have any kids uh so last year i was out there and i didn't have anything to you know i was I had, I was living, renting a space. I didn't have a, my own family, you know? And so of course, you know, in my eyes, I'm like, dang, I'm like the perfect candidate to be doing this. Cause okay. you know, I mean, I have, I have no kids. I don't have a wife. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't have my own house. I was like, I'm good. And so, yeah. but, but in the eyes of my family, you know, they're of course very concerned and seeing things like that. But uh, they were like that when I joined the military too. So it was okay. just very, very loving and protective family. As yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable, too, because it's very, you know, I, I couldn't imagine my my kid being out there, even though it's for a great cause, it's for, you know, a good purpose. It's like you just want your, your loved one to be safe. So I understand that. But I do thank you for even your bravery for being out there, because that is a lot. Um, you have a lot of people who who might see what you do and think that is simple. But like you said, it really takes a lot of mental strength and you know to kind of push forward to to endure through through things like that so i appreciate that um now what about um oh i was asking you about your family kind of lost my train of thought so when you um you talked before like you didn't have any i like you didn't have any plans whatsoever to do this um so you had no experience whatsoever in live streaming or anything like that you just went out there and was like, I'm going to go out there on my phone. And that was it. And that's how this whole thing got started. So the, the only experience I had in live streaming was, and I, again, this is why I say this is from a higher power. Cause mm -hmm. uh, I'd say the week prior to George Floyd's murder, I, I had, I was bored from school cause I was in school full time. I was in school to become a addiction counselor to work with. I wanted to work with veterans struggling with addiction. I was, I was all in. I was a president of the Veterans Club at Minneapolis College, treasurer of the Addiction Counseling Club. Like it was oh, going wow. great. It wow. was going. It was going great. And then COVID came, and then we all were sent home, and it was all at home learning. And that's no go for me. Like okay. I need. I need to. I need to get up, shower, get ready, go to school physically, be there. Like okay. I need that. Like I can't. I if I wait. If they tell me it's all homework for, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. So it was just a bad time. So I was like, man, I need something to cheer me up. So uh, I had a YouTube channel that, you know, that there's maybe 200 people on it, but it was just my, my old YouTube channel. And I was like, I'm just going to go live and play video games. And there was like my personal friends, like maybe two or three people watching at a time, 
you know, I just just me streaming and I would share the link on my Facebook and annoy all my friends for my video game YouTube shares. And this was the, a week before I had started streaming to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of got, you know, com like familiar being in front of a, you know, but no one there wasn't anybody watching. It was like one or two people that yeah. knew me already. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't have a following at all. Okay. And so in a way, it's not technically my first time ever streaming, but in terms of being outside, like I was in my house the whole time streaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before that, but in terms of being outside on my cell phone, I'd never gone on Facebook Live before uh, mm, at that wow. moment. Uh, so I didn't even know how Facebook Live worked. I didn't know you could turn it, like, your phone sideways. Uh, that's why my all my streams are vertical <laughs> in, in the, the first few days because I didn't know how it, I didn't do, use any of that. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, in terms of, uh, being out and filming something live that isn't, you know, isn't me playing video games. Yes, that was yeah. the Minneapolis was the very first time. So were you surprised? Because I know your viewership, like you said, kind of exploded. Were you surprised by that? Very. I, I it, it all happened organically. Like my friends, my friends will tell it the funniest because they were all uh, they were all watching when I was first there because I had went to George Floyd Square first before it became George Floyd Square. And I had just 20 people watching, just my friends and family. And then, and then I went to the, the third precinct that same night. And uh, you know, hours later, I had 20,000 people watching. I just, wow. cause people saw it and started sharing and sharing and sharing. And, uh, and it just, the rest is history. It's, yeah. it's vir viral, that's the yeah. best way to put it. Wow. So do you feel like, cause I know we talked a little bit about the, what the media was showing versus kind of like what you were showing. And I know there was a few other kind of streamers out there too, but um, do you, what kind of sense do you get from like the, the media that was there, like the professional kind of organized media? Do you feel like they kind of like don't like you because they're, you're taking like kind of discrediting what they're doing or like, do you feel any competition with the regular media or how do you see that? With the, I mean, the, the only competition is with the mainstream news. All, all the independent media, we all work together. Not, not in the sense of like co-ownership of our own stuff, and not like you know, like when we're out there and we're reporting. Like if someone needs a battery pack, like hey, you throw throw another uh, independent streamer a battery pack or like a cord or or share or or tell your viewers to go into their stream while they're live and and, and things like that. So. It, when I say work together, we like, uh, we're just, we're not, it's not a competition out there. We're just trying to help promote each other because we know the, the mainstream news is the, the competition out there because, right. you know, they, they've they been around for forever and they got notoriety. They all got the check marks on their Facebook. So no matter what, they're going to get the best algorithms and everything. Exactly. So they're, they're the competition. But last year, uh, I mean, or just even in general now, they want to, they, their main focus is the violence. And and um, and like and yeah, violence, unrest. Uh, they wouldn't the the last year during the lock-ins at George Floyd Square when we could only be in that intersection because um, of the curfew. The news would show up at 5 a.m. and talk about the night, but they weren't even out there. They didn't see that the the community was out there doing speeches, just uh, sharing stories, um, history lessons in that intersection at George Floyd Square. And so then the news would show up at 6 a.m. and their escalades in there. Well, myself, Unicorn Riot, I think there was a Japanese uh, affiliate that was sitting down in the intersection uh, and a couple other independent news that was just in there live, like just had a live feed going. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest difference is that the news will per per perpetuate violence and, and, and fear as long as they can and drain every little inch of it out and create yeah. and and when it's not enough, they will create their own yeah. uh, or, and, yeah. and create their own fear and narratives um, yeah. and see how the people like react to it. Um, we've seen that in false news stories that they'll put out. Um, well, they'll put out a completely just wrong news story to get re a reaction out of people. Then they'll yeah. retract it. But then the retraction, it's already it's, it's too late at that point. Like, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. initial the initial um, story is already put out and people it's already planted into their subconscious and how they're going to feel. So, yeah, uh, the, yeah, it's just yeah, the biggest competition is with the mainstream news and and just providing an alternative uh, alternative viewpoint uh, that you're not going to get from the mainstream news. And I, my ours is unedited, you know, unfiltered here. You don't have any bleeps or cuts or 
or anything like that. So, and if, and, and the biggest thing I think is when somebody wants to use their voice and speak um, on my platform, they're not going to get censored or have their words chopped up mm. and, and, and to, to fit a narrative. They're going to, okay. you're going to get to hear their speech start to finish. Um, whereas the mainstream news likes to cut, chop, up, yeah. Yeah, chop it up to fit their narrative. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I mean, it, it, you know, watching your live stream really, really gave me a different sense of the news in general, because I mean, for the most part, even if, if it's subconscious, you kind of trust that what you're seeing is what's happening um, and you don't have any other way to know anything differently. So you kind of don't have a choice unless you just watch a bunch of different news media outlets and kind of, you know, go from there. But your um, your live stream kind of highlighted to me the way that they pick and choose what they want to show, you know, and it really kind of made me feel more like, I don't want to say you can't trust it because really you can't trust any of that stuff uh, too much, but it really let me know that there's like what you're saying is more about ratings and, you know, selling commercial ads or whatever it is like that, than it is about what's actually important and what's actually going on. So I really could see that much more clearly with your live stream and the news more than I ever have before. And so that's, you know, it really brought it to my attention in a way that, you know, like I said, I didn't know before. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so with what you're doing now, so you, you've established a media company and um, you're kind of growing in leaps and bounds, it seems. I mean, that's I know people that have been doing things online for a long time and they don't have 70,000 <laughs> 70, plus followers. And like you said, it's really a blessing for for that, you know, for that to have grown in that way. So where do you see yourself going from here forward with with uh, Marcardo Media? So just continuing and, and going further um, down the road, I want to hire more live streamers that can go live on Mercado Media as reporters. Um, you know, that's a big trust because I'm a, I am the, you know, the voice of it and the, and, yeah. uh, and whatnot. I am the, you know, people tune into it for the video. So uh, getting another reporter is crucial and more to be able to provide live stream in different parts of the country because you know, I've traveled the country and now I have viewers from around the, the world, mm. um, you know, from Minneapolis, but even I've traveled the country and I have people from different cities in that city will, will tune in and they'll be like, oh, who's Mercado Media? And they'll tune in and now they're, they're still following. And so a lot of our news now is local news here in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But down the road, I want to have more of a national, like a few national streamers that will go live in other states. Um, just to provide more live stream news coverage uh, that you're not gonna get. And you know, I don't know how much different, and obviously I started to do interviews now. I got a microphone and a better, just a better setup to just talk to people because before it was just kind of me filming and putting my narration over it. Um, mm -hmm. But now, because I have a better microphone capabilities and I'm just uh, so blessed with um, just being able to grow and, and get new equipment and gear to do more things. Um, it's just, I think it's adaptive over time and, 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 you know, it's all glory to God and, and everything that he gives me happens in certain phases. And I think that's just how it's going to go. And mm -hmm. it gives me time to learn how to do things before I do the next thing. Yeah. Um, and so it's just been great how everything's uh, played out for me. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I know it can be a lot to deal with. And I like how you're saying it's like baby steps because to go from where you were to where you are now, that's kind of fast. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was asking about how you deal with it and things like that. And another thing that, you know, is a, is a consequence of growing so fast. It's kind of the negativity that you get. I mean, I've watched the live streams and some of the things that people say, mm -hmm. um, even in the comments is very harsh, even sometimes towards you and stuff like that. So and then, you know, there's even the possibility of someone wanting to harm you just because they're seeing your face and stuff like that. So how do you deal with the negativity and the, the possibility of becoming a target because your, your face is kind of out there? Oh, yeah, I've been a I've been a target. You know, they went last year during uh, the streams, I, people in different dichotomies, more on the right wing side. And the, they were finding photos of my old army training, trying to figure out where I go to drill. Like it was getting bad at wow. the at the Capitol last year. There was a, a stop the steel rally or something, and they had Proud Boys out there, like that were had they were behind me, just standing there, was standing watch over me. So it was it was becoming a real 
like physical concern where because i like when i traveled i like to be live while i travel and show up like, hey guys this is what this city looks like you know what right. i mean because while, while i'm live and going to places that have unrest or just something going on i like to show people that might be watching from a different state or out of the country uh in a different country uh, like what this what's going on and so when things were starting to get crazy in the election season last year uh, i really couldn't do that for safety reasons i couldn't just be happily live somewhere and just be like hey guys this is this city here we are like hanging out no it was a a safety concern uh but now i mean i have an amazing mod team uh that's about 30 30 people that sit there and they they will watch the chat and we have chat we have we have every chat feature that exists we have bots we have moderators and mm. people still will come like it still can get through sometimes in people's mm. comments uh, we have rules and we we do provide a you know a, a platform for all opinions if you want to come and express your opinion in an educational way whether you agree or not but we we do have a set of rules and if you just uh, if you go against those rules you're gonna you're gonna get kicked out of the stream and okay. people people will say that's censorship and whatnot and it's like hey it's you know your comment can be there and it's a disgusting comment if you want that to go or if you want that to remain somebody else can come into that stream and say why is it mercado allowing these comments report mm -hmm. that comment and then facebook sees it takes down the whole page because we're mm -hmm. not we're not doing anything okay. to, to mitigate these okay. comments and they happen and it's and it's true and 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 some of the less some of the less edgier people will see that and be like wow mercado is just censoring our opinions now look at this and that's not even the case it's oh. it's it's so much more so I'd say now I'm a little more numb to these comments, whereas last year I took a lot of it personally and it like was a lot because you know it's like I had a not so public life to now and my like you allude exactly. to I have all these tens of thousands of followers on multiple platforms and so I'm not really so I don't really have a private life anymore. Right, right. And and uh, yeah, it just you know like I said how to deal with it. I talked to the the mod team and talk to my group of people i talk to my friends my family and just you know it's it's just part of the job now it's just part of it yeah so have you ever had to like hire any like protection when you go out there have me have do you just not go out if you feel like your safety is at risk or do you have you ever actually had to kind of hire some people to kind of go out with you to kind of watch your back well, see, that's why my family is upset because I will go out there no matter what, and so, and so will the mods. <laughs> but that's why I have uh, a bulletproof vest. Like I have okay. armor and front backplate armor, and I have a, a Kevlar helmet. Like I got, I got all types oh, of, yeah. I got all my vitals covered. So okay. you know okay. what I mean. Like I, I don't have no, I don't have personal security now for the next election season. That might be a, a requirement because that was it was getting bad. At mm. the end of 2020 there like mm. it, in ways that were getting ridiculous like mm. you know it was real bad so for the next one maybe i might have just someone come and stand there with me you know but no i've never had um personal security minus uh my awesome mods that come with me in person um, yeah well, you know i've had a couple moderators that watch and they live in the twin cities come with me um on trips and and and, and also they've driven my truck while well, I walked during the walk in Kenosha, we walked 38 miles um, from Kenosha, Wisconsin to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And they drove my truck and, and did some filming and, and helped out. So, you know, I, I don't have, and I have an option for that, for security help, okay. um, but I have not used that. Uh, yeah, but we have help from the mod team that are there to assist and, and oh. help and help myself and help uh, the media company prosper while okay. we're out there. Yeah, that's good to know, yeah. yeah. So now this all started around, of course, the, the death of George Floyd, which is, of course, rooted in racism. And so uh, my next question I want to ask you is like, you know, your opinion about racism in and of itself. Like, I know for you to be out there in general, you probably had a certain point of view of it. But I just kind of want to get, you know, just your view as Andrew, what you how you see racism, what you think about it, even before this started. And then kind of, you know, if it's changed at all today. So I was one of those that was ignorant to it and, and thought that, you know, it, it didn't exist um, or it or it didn't. It wasn't a relevant talking point at okay. the, in these days. I was very ignorant before all this happened. Yeah, I was yeah. a, I was a news watcher. I, I I thought I had I thought I had the answers without doing any research. You know what I mean? Uh, mm. 
people I would I would listen to other people and their opinions and what they would say and I would take mm -hmm. that and be like yep that's my opinion now okay. that's how I feel I would never take a I don't think I ever took a my own opinion like I, it would always be given to me from somebody you know some oh, wow. dumb yeah. opinion and so when being out there in Minneapolis at, at the start that was the first time I've actually been a part of, of seeing something for myself mm -hmm. and that's why I went there I was like I was starting to get tired of it because we all watched the video of George Floyd getting murdered. Mm. And, and I, and I said, there's this, that's complete police brutality. There's no way like this is, this is cut and dry. Like he murdered that man. Like mm. you know, there was, and this was while I was ignorant. This was before I went down there. I was, I said that and still to have people come in there and, and have this have covert racism with, with how they're, with how there's, with how they're uh, talking about George Floyd and going after his past. And I'm just seeing mm. this. I'm just like, what, what is that? What is that relevant? What is it? He, you know, Shelvin murdered him. Like we right. watched it in front of our own eyes. And so, right, right. and so that's when I was like, I'm going down there. I'm not watching this on the news. I don't, I don't, I'm not watching it. I just will not do it. I'm going down there. I'm going to see it for myself. Okay. And, and from that moment on, I just, I, I started to see the realities of, of what people are talking about and how racism still is very, mu very much so exists in, in many ways in, in the country, in, a, in the system. Um, you know, in, in, in the police force in, in anything that has a, uh, a power entity in the country, there's, yeah. there's, there's as racism has touched it or, mm. or still thrives within it. Mm. And, and so a lot of it is covert. Um, some people are comfortable being overtly racism, not, or overtly racist now mm. and are just out with it because the light, either the last president, your 45 empowered them or, they're just emboldened them. Embolden yeah. them. They're just comfortable now and they're just overtly out there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's you have to be willfully ignorant or or uh, yeah, willfully ignorant. Choose you have to literally choose to not see it, uh, to not see the racism that still exists in 2021. Uh, it has to be a, an actual choice within mm -hmm. yourself to not see it now uh, mm -hmm. when it's when it's so out there in broad daylight. Yeah, broad, broad daylight. George yeah. Floyd was murdered in broad daylight. He was lynched in broad daylight, and, mm. and so it's we have cameras now. We have more people, independent journalists out there that you can see it. You know, and and last year, uh, they or at the beginning of the year, they went to Pete Orput's house for Dante Wright, and he was the Washington County prosecutor on that case. And you just the there were protests and activists out there holding church services, and and you hear the neighbors come out saying the most the worst words the worst words to say to people like mm -hmm. words that, you know, it, it were very racist words towards mm -hmm. the, uh, the protests out there. And that is overt racism. That is, right. you know, that is in your face and, and it's all happened this year. And mm -hmm. so it very much so does exist. It is uh, very much uh, something that we need to continue to combat and call out uh, whenever we do see it, because it's, it's ridiculous that yeah. it still exists today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know um, when I was the church that I was going to at the time, I was very surprised. So when all this stuff happened, I was surprised at how many because I go I went to a predominantly white church and I was really surprised at how many of them had no idea that racism was still going on. It was shocking to me because, you know, of course, as a black person in this country, you know, it's there. You just kind of deal with it. But for them to have no idea that it even existed still and that there was one guy that I was talking to had never heard of Jim Crow before. I said, do you have you ever heard of Jim Crow? Do you know what Jim? He was like, what is that? And so it, it really goes to and, and that's what I really like about your live stream. It really goes to show that there are, you know, especially the history and the education system in America, that people have been kept from knowing these things like purposely kind of kept in a bubble and knowing what is going on on a larger scale and that a lot of this, the ways to combat this, these type of things is just through education and your live stream really kind of helps open people's eyes. Now we know there are some people, if you don't want your eyes to be open, they would never be open. It doesn't matter if somebody pries them open with a fork, you know, but those people who want to know, and those people are interested in knowing your live stream is definitely an avenue to educate people about what's really going on. So I do appreciate that also. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, 
So we're getting close to the hour here. I don't know if there's a few people watching. If you guys have any questions that you would like me to ask, Andrew, I know it seems like you have a lot of your mob squad, snack squad family here. And so they probably don't have any questions. But if any, any of you guys do have any questions, I can ask Andrew for you. Um, and so the 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 other question that I, I can ask you while I'm waiting to see if anybody else has any questions is um, you talk a little bit about um, – where you see um, and the Mercado Media going in the future, but what about you? Like, where do you see yourself aside from Mercado Media? Like, is this something that you are willing to kind of invest yourself in fully, or do you want to kind of keep some time separated for your your the, the interest you have in recovery stuff and stuff like that? So, what 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 is it? Uh, what is Andrew doing in the future? Where are you going in the future outside of Mercado Media? Well. I mean, I'm actually all in on Mercado Media, okay. and, and so last year I, I I put everything down. Any job at the job I had, I was able to get out of the Army Reserves because um, I was still under contract for the Army Reserves and for inactive to, or for to drill through my inactive time. So my, I already had completed my eight year contract, but then after your eight years, you have the option to drill some more if you want to. Uh, and so I, they let me get out last year, so I had really went all in on this and. I applied to the University of Minnesota uh, to be for a journalism program. Okay, Hopefully, wow. I get accepted. Um, okay. So, beyond you know, I beyond this, I just stay involved in in the communities that I'm involved in, in the recovery community, and, and keep growing there. I, I I plan to be on the board someday in the recovery softball community. Hopefully, um, uh, continue just continue streaming uh, video games or softball and, and travel on YouTube and, and whatnot to the snack squad. Like that's, that's still growing every day. Uh, so, and I mean, it's, there's people that, that this is what they do. They just live stream uh, that are, that are very, very successful, just um, providing live stream content on the internet. And, and whether that's my news reporting on Mercado media or snack squads, video games, or, or I'll always have something to do. Yeah. And I think it's also it's good to have uh, multiple avenues of of what I do. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to ask you this for the ladies. You don't have to answer this if you don't want to. But is there any romantic interest going on? I mean, do you? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's she's wonderful. She's amazing. So. Okay. Wow. That's yeah. great. That's great. Oh yes. Oh yeah. yes. Um, and so um, somebody's asking, does Andrew have any plans to cover any of the Enbridge Line 3 action? Yeah. Okay. I want to. So the, the thing is, I, I don't I think now I get uh, personal messages from fa like families supporting families against police violence to Shira Garraway, amazing, amazing uh, leader and uh, a family of a stolen life from law enforcement. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not really involved in the activists. They don't really reach out to me often uh, mm. to, to come get involved in things. But, you know, I, and I, and I've gotten messages and, and whatnot, uh, to get up there to do the line three protests. And, and I just haven't heard anything. I don't know who to connect with. Mm. Uh, I don't mm. know. And I, and I, I did, uh, I, I, by a chance I was at a, some right wing, event last year streaming it at the governor's mansion and the line three protest was afterwards and so i was like well i'm gonna see what that's about and so they came and the and they they did speeches and educated me on what line three was and in the enbridge pipeline i was like wow like i need to like that's something i need to get involved in and i just i haven't i haven't heard anything or how to get involved in the, the protests up there okay. but yes they they are they are ongoing and unicorn riot is actually doing a very good job covering the line three protesting that has been happening but okay. yes I, I would like to get up there and uh and and film that okay um so i was wondering and again you don't have to answer this question if you want to i'm just basically asking out of my own curiosity how financially lucrative is this i mean because you think about you know people kind of just live streaming with your phone and i know you have all your gear which i know was not cheap to get and you kind of upgraded with the microphone and things like that. Has this turned into something? And of course, you don't have to be specific, but has it turned into something that has become financially lucrative to you to the point where you don't need to work anywhere? It's not completely stable yet. Um, this summer, I haven't had to work just because of the live streams. I have people, 
uh, you can, while I'm live, people can send pennies. Like it's called, they're called stars on Facebook. So, you know, somebody, you know, 10 people send 10 cents. That's like a, you know, that's a dollar. I think I'm not good at math, but okay. <laughs> whatever it, the, the, it adds up over time and like, it, and you can save that up and then Facebook will send me a check a couple oh. months later after whatnot. So I can just, it's just money to save that you get from people that are, are tipping or appreciating the work that I'm doing. Okay. And so, and so it has provided stability this summer, um, and, but it, it, the support's kind of dying down. The, the support really picks up when things are, right, are when tense. Protest, yeah, yeah, when there's some unrest, like Brooklyn Center was, like I, I we gained 30,000 followers. It was like, you know, there were people on my, like I had tens of thousands of people watching again. Like mm. I, I've only had maybe 3,000 to to 4,000 watching at the max over the last year at one time mm. for like com some events, but uh, Brooklyn center, there was uh, six to 10,000 people watching. Yeah. And so th yeah. that's when, that's when I really grow. And, and then after, you know, after that and things kind of die down and I'm doing press conferences and just um, uh, peaceful marches and uh, community events, the supporters kind of go away because they're, they're there to tune into the, the the craziness and you know i'm just not gonna i'm just not that type of person to just only go to the the crazy events because i will i will literally go insane too if yeah. i'm just involved in, in chaos and yeah. destruction uh, i just i cannot be a part of that and it's even more fruitful for me and and my knowledge and growth to also go to the um the community led events by activists and protesters and whatnot. Cause then you get to hear directly from community leaders and activists themselves. You get to hear the, the wants and needs of the community instead of hearing it through a filter or from the mainstream news from yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Well, you was like, I'll go crazy if I can, mm. but I mean, it kind of shows you a little bit and it's, it's unfortunate that this is just a part of human nature, but it kind of shows you the thinking behind the major news corporations, because that is what, people want to see and they want to see the chaos and they want to see. And so you see that when stuff dies down, your viewers dies down, but when it's hot, you know, and it's just unfortunate that, you know, human beings are that way. And the news, the, the bigger news media, this is what they're trying to feed. They're trying to keep people's attention and, and things like that. But, you know, we still have to have people who are willing to expose the truth and say the truth and to show, you know, stuff outside of that, because that's not all what human beings are either. Yeah, we like, you know, the chaotic stuff or the new stuff. We want to see what's going on, but that's not all of who we are. And I think what you, what, yours is a good balance between showing that, but then also showing the important stuff and showing a different side of human nature too. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let me look here and see if I have any more questions here. Um you have uh, Carrie Slack. Oh, let me see. A lot of people just saying yes. I think they're kind of talking to each other too. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. They, they like uh, they they talk to each other in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, that's um, I mean, there's like a lot of stuff. Well, actually, this came to my mind just now. So you talked about like your view of racism, how it was before, and then how it kind of changed. I, I, I tuned into a few videos where you were kind of talking a little bit more about politics. And I think that was your personal page. Has your political views changed over the course of this? And if so, can you talk a little bit about how that how was changed? Absolutely. So I have always been Republican. I was raised a Republican. I grew up in a conservative household. Uh, I was adopted when I was a young when I was a baby. So this is that's just the environment that I grew up in and, and conservatism and, and being a Republican. I always voted Republican uh, when I was a kid. My dad had me and my brother work in the phone lines for John McCain's campaign. Like, we oh, were, wow. yeah, like I heard from you Sarah Palin. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that's why I, I go so hard on conservatives and what like right. is like. I was one of y'all. Like that's one of the biggest things that, that I don't think they understand <laughs> is that I was I was that I was involved in the, that dichotomy and know where you're getting your talking points from. I know I know where you're I know where you're getting your information from and and why it's wrong. But mm -hmm. and so I, that's why I, I really try to I, I know I hammer the conservatives a lot. Um, but I but at that on the same token, I'm not Democrat either. I didn't I don't vote Democrat in 2020. I voted Green Party. Mm. Uh, I was I was either gonna go yeah I just wanted a third party candidate and and a Green Party candidate um, Howie looked amazing just 
stood out to me. And that it was kind of a protest vote from me because the Republicans and Democrats are the same. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the they're the you know they 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 come off differently to the public, but then behind closed doors, they're 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 working together. Um, it's a, the two wings on the same bird, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, into, yeah. Until we start electing somebody that isn't a Republican or a Democrat, you know, I don't think we're going to have real changes. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, yeah. You know, the, every year the Democrats say that they're going to make all these social changes and and all these amazing, great things, and then they never do. And then the Republicans just give tax cuts to the rich mm. and, and and try to experiment with trickle down economy every every time, and it never works. And then they just keep. Uh, it's just never it's never going to work with a Republican or a Democrat uh, politician at the head of yeah. the executive chair. And I just that's just how I feel. And yeah. so I'll, I'll probably be voting third party from from here on out. I just yeah. will, I just will never vote a Republican or Democrat again. Yeah. And I mean, I, I agree with you. I know when you you talk about your politics, you always have to be ready for people who are going to disagree with that. Yep. But I, I, I agree. And I don't I don't necessarily think one of them is better than the other. They're both on some garbage. If you mm -hmm. want to say it like that to me, yep. um, there's, there's good sides and bad sides to both. But for the most part, they have never really brought the type of change that is actually needed um, in America. And so I totally agree with you. And I, I like to say that I'm not a Republic or a Democrat. I'm a Christian. So mm, I, that's a good way to put it. There you yeah. go. And if I, I believe that if you are a sincere Christian, you're not going to side with any of those 100 mm. percent because they none of them really represent the teaching of the Bible to the letter. They none of neither one of them do. And so so I try to listen and, and see which one might be better for whatever here and there. And like you say, other groups also not just to stick to the Republican Democrat, but I totally agree with you. I don't necessarily think that, you know, Republican, that they both need to, they need to be kind of, to me, it's kind of outdated and they are so entrenched in certain philosophies. It's very difficult for them to kind of grow beyond those now. And society is changing and it seems like the political parties are not really changing with society. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I see it. Yeah, no, they're, they're very archaic and, and it's all it's all theater. It's political theater between Republicans and Democrats. It's all the news channel. Mainstream news channels are like essentially Republican and Democrat news channels now, like CNN, yeah. Fox News. Exactly. And all, if, if you ever just like I, the only thing I to, I only watch them to just to see what they're saying, just yeah. to see, just to get that information of, OK, where are the people in my chat getting their yeah. talking points from? Yeah. They're not getting it from me because they're saying they're saying things that are completely out of left field in terms of what's happening in front of us. So yeah. I watch them just to see where they're getting because this is that's exactly where they're getting it from, or they're getting it from a like a YouTuber or somebody on the internet that gets it from there. Like they get yeah. it from there, but then they get it, then they, they do their own show, and then yeah. that gives that gives people an avenue to say, I don't watch Fox News or CNN. It's like, well, yeah. you're getting you're getting your talking points from them, but it, it they all they do is just talk about each other. And, yeah. and whatnot they, they talk like they just like cnn might as well just be fox news and fox news might as well just be cnn because all they do is just talk about Bad what each other. other are doing they never yeah. the and then as soon as you go and you try to talk and, and dive into your own party you get called a traitor or you get called a liberal or you get called a whatever yeah. like as soon as you I, i'm just from personal experience like as soon yeah, as yeah. i started as soon as i started going in on conservatives and conservatism and and just how just what's what how i how i've changed and how i feel they don't want to hear that like people yeah. don't want people don't want to hear that. They'll reject you. They'll say you're, they'll say all types of things. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, I, I can only do the. You can only drag a thirsty horse to water. You can't force it to drink. You know? Exactly, and I mean, it kind of like it's. It, of course, it's a, for both of them. They're just trying to hold on to power, and, and and sometimes, even though I like to take a look at the smaller parties, I will be honest in saying I feel like sometimes if they grew, they will probably do the same thing. And it's just as they say, power corrupts. So it's like once people get in that position, they kind of just want to stay in power and they start doing stuff to try to stay in power. And it, it kind of becomes less more about that than actually helping people. But I'm not, you know, a psychic or anything. So, you know, you still I be uh, I try to watch out and just keep an open mind. But I'm really skeptical of when it comes to these systems that hold a lot of power, the, the ability they have to stay pure um, when they do that. So, yeah. Especially yeah. a, a system that's built off of how much profit you're putting in. Exactly, it. exactly, exactly. 
So yeah, we're we're past uh, the time now. It's eight oh six. If you guys, I don't see any 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 other questions here. A lot of comments, but not a lot of questions. Um, but we can go ahead and wrap up. Be, um, before we wrap up, I just would like for you to give anybody who's interested in doing anything like this or starting anything like this. Um, what are three pointers that you would like to give them before we wrap up? Uh, motivation. Understand. Uh, what your motivation is uh, for for doing this? Um, you know, are you going to provide an educational piece? Are you just out there to just be out there? I don't know if um, you have to understand. Number two, you got to understand it's a lot of work, uh, a lot of stress, because you know it's, you're just there holding the phone, but there's a lot happening around you. You have to be you have to be mindful of your situation. Um, you have to be you have to be uh, uh, situational awareness has to be you know, you, you just, you gotta be, you can't be lazy when you're out there. You can't be sitting there or relaxed. Cause like today, for example, we're sitting there at a press conference and at the Minnesota state Capitol and a, a trailblazer drives onto the Capitol lawn towards the press conference. Wow. The, yeah, it was live on my feed today. It was like things like that happen at any yeah. moment. So you, you can, it's, uh, it's just a big uh, mental thing. And, and probably three is uh, to have a, to have a group of people, uh, around you as a support team um you know it could be family or friends but i have my mod squad the mod team and it's, again it's like 27 people i believe and then uh and we we just i talked talk about that talk about things with them um things that i, I have going on uh and, and and whatnot and it's a really a good outlet for me to share how what things i want to do with my media with this you know what i mean like because mm -hmm. A lot of this is kind of scary because I'm out there and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do at times, or mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know where this is going to go. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good to send my ideas and and what I want to a group of people that are going to either be back and say, "Hey, yeah, that's a great idea, Andrew, go ahead," or "No, like that doesn't sound like a good idea." Yeah. Um, it's like a like a council. And, yeah. And I'm, not, yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not a I'm not a dictator with my with my decision making, I go to a group. Some things I have to make decisions on myself, but I go to a group of people uh, for big decisions and, and growth. So, uh, motivation. Uh, you know, uh, making sure you get your mental health taken care of uh, and, and your physical health taken care of, and then a support team uh, behind you. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That sounds good. So, um, so thanks again for, and uh, again, before we wrap up, can you just let people know, and I'll put some links under the post here for those of you who have never heard of Andrew. I live in Minnesota, so I very familiar with, uh, Andrew, but I know some other people who maybe are not from Minnesota or whatever might not have heard of you. And I'll put the links below if you guys want to check him out, but Andrew, can you let people know, you know where they can find you your your social media your facebook page what you're doing what they can expect coming up soon of course so uh all news reporting streams are on mercado media on facebook so you can find the mercado media facebook page we're also on snack squad's youtube channel so snack squad youtube channel mercado media facebook page uh, i got an instagram challenge your thinking uh, i got a twitter the guru merc at the guru merc uh i got a TikTok now snack lord 23 i try to get that TikTok up to a thousand i think i only need about 20 more followers on TikTok so i can go live on TikTok. there's a lot of people there i don't i have it on my one phone i don't really watch the videos because i would i wouldn't get anything done but i know it's a good app because there's a lot of people there and i can get information out really yeah. fast yeah so yeah, yeah. if i can get those thousand followers i can start going live and i'll go live on TikTok uh, okay. at events so, but upcoming in August, we have the March on Washington, the 58th uh, and the 58th anniversary of the March on Washington, being led by Martin Luther King III, the National Action Network. Uh, so Al Sharpton will be there, and his and his uh, team. And so I'll be out there um, in Washington D.C. again, and I hope to bring uh, some more historical streams for the Snack Squad, so we can go to more monuments and see more of Washington D.C. Because the last couple times I was there. There was fences, and there was uh, they had the National Guard in Washington D.C. and after the Capitol insurrection, and then before then, uh, last year it was everything was shut down, so all the monuments had fences around them. Yeah. And there really wasn't anything to to go see or go learn about in our nation's capital. 
Um, so I'll, I'm hoping to bring that as well as the uh, 58th uh, uh, commemorative march um, okay. in Washington, D.C. Okay. And then what about your softball thing and uh, your, the recovery softball thing? Do you want to mention that a little bit too? or? Yeah, recovery softball. Um, I mean, I'm an addict. I'm in recovery. Uh, I was uh, addicted to cocaine for two years, now two, yeah. three years. And I've been... I've been clean since January of 2019, so it'll be three in 2019, 2020. It'll be three years this January clean from from cocaine use, and so that and so I'm I'm in recovery. I'm not sober, and that's important to point out. There's the uh, there's sobriety. There's the 12 steps in recovery, and then there's also the harm reduction path in recovery. Mm -hmm. And so for me, what that looks like is. I've never, I've never had an issue with alcohol. I'm not, a, I don't like drinking really. I'm not a big drinker. So I can have a beer here then like once a month. And anybody that's friends with me, I'll tell you, I am not a drinker. Like I, I don't drink, mm -hmm. um, but I, I do use THC and, but, and THC has significantly helped my mental health, mm -hmm. my anxiety, my PTSD, getting through the day. Like it just does a lot. And so I, as I went to school to become an addiction counselor, I learned of the harm reduction route in, in recovery and, and people and there's so many people in harm reduction that use THC or or there's other just other ways in so many different ways outside of the 12 steps which are which is sobriety and actually harm reduction welcomes the 12 steps into into harm reduction uh, avenue or pathway in recovery mm -hmm. so so although I'm not sober and I, I don't claim to be sober I am in recovery I'm two and a half years or two and a half years clean Okay, wow. and so my Friday nights I spend in the recovery softball league, and so that those nights I mean I don't when I'm out there I don't bring my my medical weed or anything. It's a okay. completely that environment is a sober environment for all people, no matter what you're, what's going on. If you're 30 days clean, 30 days sober, 30 days clean. Mm. If today is your first day, like it's just an environment to promote re the recovery world, um, sobriety for those that want to be. Mm. Uh, sober, like as me for me again, I'm I'm in recovery, but I'm not sober. But there are people that want and need to be sober, 100, mm -hmm. and and their needs need to be met as well. So it's just a, a respectable, a respectful environment of no, there's no alcohol allowed at the softball fields on Friday nights. No, no uh, illicit or drug use. No, nothing. Uh, so it's just a nice environment to compete in and and it's fellowship we pray afterwards we say the serenity prayer after every game mm -hmm. uh, and it's just an amazing uh avenue to go instead of going to the bar on a friday night you know you, yeah. go, you go to yeah. the softball fields and so for people like me in recovery it's it's just a huge avenue to have that because some nights i want to go out to the bar on friday nights and mm -hmm. and then that can lead me to a different bar which could lead me to a crowd of people yeah. which could lead me to you know it's it's i i know i know my tools in my toolbox and where i can and where i cannot go and so it, having softball on friday nights and being involved as i am with that it, it's it's provided a very healing environment yeah wow that that even deepens your story because it's already <laughs> miraculous for you to have grown into this media company in less than a year. But now when you add the fact that you recently were an addict and that you grew this, like it just makes the story that much more amazing. So, wow. Wow. All, all, all awesome. glory to God. Glory yeah, to God. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. I don't want to hold you up any longer for tonight. And again, I thank you so much for doing this. I'm happy to even talk to you myself and reach out. I've been seeing your face and hearing your voice for a while now. So it's good to put, you know, have a conversation with you. And um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I am Sage the Coach. I am a certified life and relationship coach. I coach from a Christian perspective. And you can also schedule free sessions on my page for any type of coaching that you are interested or in need of. So I guess that's it. And I thank you again. And you guys have a good night. And um, I'll see you on Ricardo Media in the Absolutely. Near future. All right. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having me. Thank you no so much. No problem. No problem. Have a good night. You too now. All right, bye-bye.